What's up guys and welcome back to the Keep It Techie channel where we dive into the wonderful world of Linux and help you get a foothold in the tech field. My name is Josh and today we're going to take a deep dive into setting up a Samba server using Ubuntu 24.04 Server Edition. So whether you're setting this up for home use or a small business, I'll guide you through each step to get your file sharing game on point. All right, so before we jump into the installation and configuration, let's talk about what Samba is and why you might want to set it up. Samba is a open source implementation of the SMB slash CIFS networking protocol. In simpler terms, it's a way to share files, printers, and other services between Linux and Windows systems. And this is especially handy if you have a mixed environment at home or work. So let me break down what we'll be covering. Number one, we'll be installing Samba on Ubuntu 24.04. Number two is configuring the Samba server for basic file sharing. Number three is setting up the user accounts that are needed, as well as applying permissions to the actual directories that we wanna share out. And lastly, that is to test our setup and make sure everything is working smoothly. Sounds good? Awesome. Let's get to it. Before we move forward, I wanted to give a quick shout out to CIQ, the official partner of Rocky Linux. Rocky Linux is a Linux distribution that is intended to be a downstream complete binary compatible release using the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system source code. The project is led by Gregory Kurtzer, who was the founder of the CentOS project. So check out Rocky Linux at CIQ.co. Now let's roll up our sleeves and start installing Samba. And the first thing we need to do is make sure our system is up to date. We are working with the same system I've used in previous videos that covers setting up Ubuntu 24.0 server edition. So we still have those services running on here like the LAMP stack. We have our firewall configured and we also have a static IP address on this server set up. But anytime you're installing something new, whatever type of service that you're installing, you need to make sure that the system is up to date. So let's go run that command first and that's sudo apps updates and press enter and type in your sudo password. And then this will refresh the repositories. Also check to see if there are any updates for any packages that are installed on the system and then display that to you. Like right now it says 14 packages can be upgraded. So let's go down and run the upgrade command for sudo apps upgrade. And we can put that dash Y on the end of it and let me move the mouse out of the way so you guys can see but then press enter and then it will go through and install whatever package now it looks like it only installed one of those packages and you make sure you look through exactly what the system is doing just want to point that out to you guys it says the following upgrades have been deferred due to phasing okay and so this is the only package that was up to upgraded and it also breaks it out for you so right here one upgraded zero newly installed zero to remove and 13 not upgraded so good to go now we'll install samba it's very simple just like installing any other piece of software on ubuntu server sudo apps install and then the package name is samba and press enter and it'll go through find all the dependencies download those dependencies install the samba package and get everything set up on the system like create the configuration location add those configuration files that we'll be looking at in a little bit so i'll come back when it's actually finished now that we have Samba installed though, we need to configure it. And the main configuration file is located under our each. And then there's a Samba directory and then it's smb.com. And let's go down and edit that file. But I just want to remind you guys, anytime you install services on your Ubuntu server, most of the time the configuration files will be stored under your etc directory in a folder named after the service name. So let's get into it. Let's type sudo nano and then under our e directory we're looking for samba and then smb.conf that is the file name so let's go down and open it up and this is the sample configuration file it's going to have everything set up for you as far as global settings 
And a lot of these are, you know, notes in here that's breaking down everything that's in a global setting. So you got your work group. If you want to name it that, you can change the name of it. This is the NT description field. So when you're looking at it from a Windows environment or Windows system, you'll see that as the description field, whatever you put there. Let's see networking. This is just dealing with the IP address and the net mass and how it's bind to the network. You can set a specific interface. Let's go down a little further. But what we're looking for really is at the bottom. And this is how you set up your share. I wouldn't bother any of the global settings, but if you go down here, you'll start seeing an example. So you got a printer example, and actually that's set up for you, but you can set printers up, but it kind of follows that same format. So you got your title of the share, and then you have your other options for that actual share. So let's go ahead and create one right fast. And this will be a very simple one. Let's name it share. So let's create our braces first, and then we can type share. You can name it whatever you want. And then the next thing is we want to put a path to the share. So where this share will be located as far as the file. So let's type path equals, and then we just need to put our path. So I'm gonna put it under serve, and then I'm gonna create a Samba directory, and then I'm gonna create a share directory. That's in case we want to create more than one share, we can put them all under the Samba directory. And that's just a way of keeping track of all our Samba shares. So this first one, I'm gonna just name it share. That's fine. And then let's go down to the next line and let's add browsable. We want this thing to be browsable. That way people can easily find it, but you can only connect to it if you have the right credentials. So I wanna show you guys how to do that as well. And then let's set this thing to read only no. So that way we can write to the file. So read only and then equals no and let's press enter and one other thing i don't want guests to be able to access this share i only want authenticated users to access this share and i'll show you guys that in a second because we have to create an account and then add permissions to that account so we can access this share i don't have time to go through them all with you i just kind of want to keep this condensed but i do have examples on my github so you can set up the share however you want to and so that's all the changes we need to make here let me go down and save this right fast so control x y to save it write it out we're good to go now let's create the directory and set the appropriate permissions so we can connect to this server so let's type sudo make p, and i wanted to show you guys this option for make directory this is it's basically going to create the full directory tree, even if those directories are not created. So instead of doing serve and then Samba and then create that directory and then create the next directory by running two commands, we can put that dash P in there and we can go down and create our share folder as well. And what it will do is it'll create this directory first. And if we put another directory underneath it, it'll create that one second within this directory. So just so you guys know or understand how it works. So let's go down and press enter, boom, and it creates both of those directories. Now let's go down and set some permissions on here. I'm gonna leave the ownership alone right now, but we'll go back to that in a second once we fix our user account. So let's go to capital R for recursive, press 0775, let's set it to 775. And this will give it a uh, read and write. And then right here is read, write, execute and read, write, execute. And we're good to go. So let's go down and specify the location that we want to set these permissions. So Samba and then our share directory, take that backslash style and press enter. Oh, and I forgot something right fast. As you can see, we got to type the chmod, which we heavily need that to change our permissions. And as chmod is to change the permissions of a file or a directory. So let's go and press enter. Sorry about that, my mistake, but we have our permissions set for the directory or both of these directories. Now let's go down and check our permissions right fast. So if we run LS LA and then let's go look at our serve directory and then Samba and press enter. And you'll see it's owned by root, but it has those permissions set for us. And what I'm gonna do is change the ownership of these at a, at a later time. So that's read and execute, rewrite, execute, rewrite, execute, which is 775. Now let's go down and add a Samba user. And essentially all we're doing is adding a normal user account. And then we're giving it access to our share. So I'll show you guys that in a second. Let's type uh, sudo add user and I'm gonna name it techie. So let's go and press enter. You can name it whatever you want, set a password to it. It really doesn't matter. 
but definitely remember it so you don't get locked out of it but i always recommend you create a separate account just for samba okay we're good to go now we need to set a samba password i know you're like but we just set a password no that was the password for the account techie but now we need to create a samba password so what you have to do is type sudo smb password so p-a-s-s-w-d and then dash a and then we need to specify the account which is techie and let's move that up press enter type in our samba passwords you can set it the same or you could change it to something else so we get to go so we got an smb password for our techie account now it's time to go back and change the ownership and so let's type sudo ch own this time and we want to change the ownership of that directory to techie so techie colon techie for the group so just to break this down for you ch own is changing the ownership dash or for recursive and then we're setting the owner as techie the user and we're setting the group as techie the user's group because every account that's created on the system it has its own group with the same name just so you guys know change that to samba and then that share that we got let's take the backslash off of it press enter good to go so now we have the ownership and we can actually go back to where i ls this directory so you guys can see it but the owner now is techie so we own this and we have those permissions that we set earlier instead of root all right now that we have everything configured we have our user account all that good stuff set up now in order to store using the share we need to restart the samba server so specific way to do it just like any other service so sudo system ttl and then restart smbd and that service and press enter and that'll restart the service and let me go down and show you guys the status so you guys can check it out for yourself but most of your main applications that come from ubuntu's repository it will automatically start the services you can check the status of it just to verify but it should be active running and enabled so as long as it says enabled here it will restart the samba service every time you reboot the system and the service will run as soon as it comes back up and then also right now it's active and running and all that good stuff so we are good to go so let's go on and quit that and it's one other thing we need to do and that is our firewall because you remember we got you guys we set up the firewall properly so it's blocking everything so we won't be able to access it anyway and i don't know if you guys remember what i told you guys but they have what they call application profiles under ufw let me go on and clear right fast just to make it simple so you guys can see everything that i'm doing and all we had to do is type sudo ufw and status and press enter boom that'll show you what's already open we got open ssh and also remember we set up a lamp stack so we got apache running and those ports open as well on this server so let me show you guys the profile so if we go sudo ufw and then it's app list and press enter and let me move that out of the way but app list Anytime you add a new piece of software on the system, it'll show up as under the profile, depending on the application. Of course, not all of them will show up, but if it's a default or a major service that you're gonna install on a Ubuntu server and the ports are known for that service, they most likely have an application profile within UFW and Samba does, as you can see. So let's go ahead and open up the ports right fast. And all we have to do is type sudo you allow. And all we have to do is type our application name which is samba and you have to type it exactly the way it is so capitalize that s press enter and that'll add that rule and we can run the status again so you guys can check it out for yourself but there we go samba is open it's allowing connections through the default port for samba on ip version 4 and ip version 6 so we're good to go there now let's go down and test out our connection so what i'm gonna do is switch over to a virtual machine that i already have running so let's get to it this is pop os really doesn't matter what you're connecting from they'll all work you can even connect to it from windows let me show you guys how to connect to it right fast and most of these come with the smb client installed on it so all we have to do is open up our file explorer and if you go down to other locations it'll bring up this bar down here at the bottom it all depends on the desktop environment you have on but it'll show that connect to server somewhere on there either xfce kde 
it'll have it to where you can connect to the server or type it in. Some of them will have it up here. It all depends on where it is. So open up the file explorer, go to other locations. Sometimes it'll show the share in here. Like right, right here, you can see I have a home NAS with a whole bunch of stuff. This is, it says Windows Network. You can click on that and see what's in there as well. But the easiest way to connect to it from Linux is to type in the IP address. So all you gotta do is type SMB and then port slash four slash and then the IP address of the server. And you guys know we remember what the IP address is because we set it statically on this system. So it's 192.168.10.213. And then after that, we need to put a forward slash and then the actual share name. So the share name is share. So all we have to do is hit connect and then it'll pop up with an authentication. All you have to do is type in our account, which we named our account Techie which is the one that has access to it and ownership of that directory and everything. And then we type in our password for that techie account. And then you have three options down here. You can forget the password immediately, which is what I do on systems that I don't usually connect to, like a disk virtual machine right here. So I'll forget the password immediately. That way it'll just log in. It'll use it to authenticate, log in, and mount the actual location, and then forget the password. You can also remember the password and take you log out. And so once you log out of this system, it'll forget that password. And then you can also add it to your key ring by remembering it. It all depends. But you make that decision based on what you need. Now, let's go on and uh, hit connect there. And like I said, it'll mount that location. Now, we're connected using that techie account. Let me show you guys something right fast. Let's go on and create a folder. Let's create a test folder. Call it tests. And then let's open up that directory and let's create a test file. And actually, let's go to application and open up a text editor and create something. Let's see, test one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then let's save it, save as, and we can save it in a specific location. And just so you guys know, it'll show your shares right here on the left once they're mounted on the system. So you can click there. You can even right click on it and add it, add a bookmark to it. That'll be an easy way to just click on it and it'll connect, it'll pop up with the author and you can quickly get in there. And let's name this document and let's put it in a test directory. Let's open that up and let's name it .txt and let's go ahead and save that file in that location, close it out. And then it's not gonna show up right away. You have to reload. Let's see where it is, reload. There we go. And you see the file right there. So let's go on and disconnect from the share because we don't need it anymore switch back over to our terminal and let's check out these files that we created. So let's go ls dash la and then let's go to our serve directory and then Samba and then our share directory and let's see what's in there. Press enter. And as you can see, we got our test file in there. So we own it, that's cool. The techie account owns it. And then also let's check out this test directory that's under there to us in there as well. So we got that test file and then we can nano that file. Let's go down and check it out right fast. Just see what it is. We can read it. So I don't need to type sudo. Anybody can read it. It's just not writable. But as you can see, we have that information that we saved from the other system in this file. So go down and exit out, but that's pretty much it on Samba. So there you have it. You have successfully set up a Samba server on Ubuntu 24.04 with user authentication. And so like I showed you guys, you can access this shared folder from any computer in your network, whether it's running Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. All you have to do is type in that network path similar to the way I did. In Windows, it's slightly different. You just put those uh, backslashes and it's a joke in the Windows world. Since they use backslashes, it means they're always moving backwards. And then Linux is always moving forward. That's why I use this the forward slash. So that's, I know that's kind of nerdy, but it's funny. You know what I'm saying? I remember that early on in my career, people saying that. Now, if you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to keep it techie for more awesome Linux content. Thanks for watching. And until next time, keep it techie.